Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Kathy Hester, and welcome to my kitchen. Messy as it is, but it is getting dressed up for Halloween, which is something I encourage you to do too. So, tell me where you're from, say hello, let me know how the weather is. It's starting to feel very fallish here, so I thought it's time for me to get out my slow cooker, and it's been a while. I had to clean it very, very well. <laughs> so you've got that going. And actually, you know what? My comment, there we go. My comments just had gone away. So what I wanted to do, and I may do this a few times um, over the next couple of weeks, is I'm just making a soup. So I wanted to invite you in while I'm just making a soup. So I'm gonna put some things in the slow cooker. I'm gonna talk about some of the ingredients and then later tonight, when it's ready, I'm gonna unveil it for you and show you what I add into it after the slow cooking process. And Max says hello. Max is really saying, I want another treat. I finished that one real quick, but he's not getting one. Hey, Miss Linda, how are you today? Okay, so I have a bunch of delicata squash and I don't know if you guys have them or not. Um, but one of the things is, is they're awesome and you eat the skin. So, and one of the, you can't eat all squash skin. So like you can't eat spaghetti squash skin, you don't eat butternut squash skin, but you can eat acorn squash as well. So I always like to think sometimes when it's really hard to peel, those are the ones that you can eat. As a rule of thumb, obviously there's always exceptions. Um, and Linda says it's a gorgeous fall day in Windsor, Ontario, and it's, she said it's around 70, and I think it's probably around 70, maybe mid-70s today. My, it was a little warmer than it's been. Max and I came back from our big walk. We took a walk in a neighborhood I've never been in. I had to use Siri to make sure I got home, um, but I have no sense of direction, so don't let that worry you. Hi, Ashley. Oh, yay. It's good to have you on here, live and in the flash. It's always nice. Um, so we're talking about, I'm going to make a delicata lentil soup in the slow cooker. So because it's like 1230 and I'm hoping to eat before 8 o'clock, I probably, since I'm using lentils, if I was just using vegetables and not any lentils at all, I probably could cook it on low for about six to seven hours and it would be done anyhow. These lentils I suspect to be old. And as we know, beans are the variable, right? So I'm probably gonna cook this on high for a few hours and then turn it to low, just to kind of give it that little oomph. And, Good afternoon, Miss Joanne. Okay, it's Ashley said it's 60 in Toronto. Joanne says it is 91 in Florida, which is why I don't live in Florida. <laughs> it would make me very sad. Like, I'm already sad. Like, you can even see behind me, like, the leaves aren't really changing much yet. Everything's going real, real slow, which is not my favorite. Um, what is my favorite? New Halloween decorations. And don't forget too, I've got a whole slew of cooking classes coming up. So within the Kathy's Cooking Club, I've got um, It's Fall Y'all Instant Pot Recipes, and that's this Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then on two weeks from then, which I think is the 24th, off the top of my head, I'm doing um, Autumn Soups in the Instant Pot. So we're doing two Instant Pot classes. And if you're a member of Vegan Recipes um, Cooking with Kathy Hester, a free, a free private Facebook group, there's um, links that you could get the bundle for a discount. So if you're interested, go over there and just say Kathy sent me and you can skip the questions if you want. But you could still put your email address in if you want to get notified when I have new posts up. In addition to those two normal classes through Kathy's Cooking Club, I'm trying something out new with the Chibo people. So, um, <laughs> Joanne says, it's a cool 91 though, it's fallish for Florida. And again, why I don't live in Florida. Um, so, the other two classes through Chibo are gonna be Halloween classes. 
And so if you're a member of Kathy's Club, they're not included in that because it's it's a whole other system, and right now they can't even get me discount codes or anything. Um, all I'm doing is showing up and teaching. But on um, the, tw is it the 23rd? It's that Friday. I'll put all this up into the message for the replay, too. Um, I'm going to be doing a plant-based Halloween dinner party, and we're going to make Swamp Monster Jackfruit Gumbo with Forbidden Rice, and we're going to make a pecan um, pumpkin shake with a nutless option, so don't worry. And I will be dressed up. The kitchen will be decked out. It is worth going there. So if you go to Chibo.io, Chibo.io, then you'll scroll down, click on the events, then you'll scroll down. So that's the first class of mine you'll get. There's there's probably 10 or 15 classes right now, so just keep scrolling. We'll see how many more deliveries. Right before I came on, there was a big delivery. Um, hello, Miss Barbara. How is your autumn going? And I miss you very, very much. Barbara lives near me in Pittsburgh, actually really near Howard Jacobson. Oh, and Joanne said she signed up for one of the Chibo classes. Yay! Um, and I, the second Chibo class that I was going to say is on Halloween Day because Halloween, it, during a pandemic, we're going to be in our houses, <laughs> right? And that's why I wanted to do two classes. One is you could, and with these Chibo classes, you could invite the people in your pod over, and you guys could all watch it and make things together. So that's something else you could do, and then have dinner afterwards. Or if you're not potting within your family, that could also be something. So Halloween, I wanted to do something for the kids, both small and big, like me and Cheryl. And so I'm going to do a Harry Potter Halloween party. So what we're going to make there is we're going to make butterbeer syrup. And um, I have a whole food plant-based option. It's not a one-to-one. -one. So... With the butterbeer syrup, we're going to be using some coconut milk. So there is, because you're making kind of a caramel syrup. But, and I'll tell you this right now because you're in my secret club, is that if you just use, um, puree some dates, strain it, and then make a syrup with that, you could put a little bit of salt and a little bit of vanilla. And that comes pretty darn close to being a butterbeer substitute. And you could then heat it with some non-dairy milk and make a hot butterbeer or anything like that. In the class, we're going to make full-on, full-fat butter beer. We're going to make pumpkin juice, which is not just juicing a pumpkin, and we're going to make cockroach clusters, people. Why would you not want to do that? Sounds disgusting, right? No cockroaches. It's all vegan. Basically, you're taking a date and you're stuffing it with something crunchy and yummy, like maybe a peanut or a pretzel or a pumpkin seed, and then we're going to either roll them in cocoa or dip them in chocolate. So it's a really fun thing for you to do with your kids. It's going to be at 2 o'clock on Saturday in case there is something going on later on in Halloween. So anyhow, that's all that. Um, and awesome. So, and back to the slow cooker. <laughs> So, I think some more people are on, so I, all that talking gave us some time. So, what we're doing today is we're watching Kathy experiment with a new lentil soup in her slow cooker. So, I'm going to show you and talk you through a little bit about delicata squash. We'll talk about a couple of other ingredients that I'm using and why. Then, later tonight, I'm going to unveil and tell you what else I'm going to put in. I'll probably tell you before this call is over, or before this live is over. So, a delicata squash you can eat the skin. And so let me show you, I've done half of the cutting, right? Let me get this zoomed in a little bit better. Sorry about making you a little seasick. Okay, so I've just cut, I usually cut both ends off and then I take a spoon and I dig in here and get the seeds out. Now these seeds are edible so you could toast them and put them on something. I don't feel like doing that today, so I am not, okay? And you just wanna get all the little stringy squash guts out of there. What happens if you eat a squash gut? Not much. <laughs> 
it's just a little more on the squidgy, unpleasant side. So a lot of times, you can, since this is kind of rocky, right, I will often just cut it in half. And this is what I wanted to show you too. This one's a little bit older, so it, and it would probably benefit me to use a larger knife. So why don't I show you what you should be doing instead of the laziness that is me. So then we're just gonna take it, we're gonna get small pieces. Probably gonna cut this into about four-ish pieces. And see, it's much easier with a knife that's large enough to, and actually, let me show you from the front. Okay, I'll pull this back where you can see it. Okay, so if you can have the knife where the tip is on the cutting board, so I have this on here already, I kind of, and then I'm gonna hold this, right? And this is just so everything doesn't squiggle or roll around because this is not even. And then I'm just gonna push down, and that's it. Right? So that's pretty, pretty darn easy. So let's do it here. And the ones that are uneven or more rocky, those are going to be the ones you have to pay a little more attention. And the last one, it's even good just to go ahead and get in there like that and then come back down. See? Easy peasy. And I just want kind of small pieces. You'll notice a lot in my recipes that I'll say dice or chop or whatever. And sometimes that really can vary to what you like. And you know what? If you wanted to use up both your delicata squashes instead of just being stingy like I am and using one, I would say go for it. You might just need a little more water or liquid to add in. So, and actually now I just got another idea about what I might use to top it with. So I'm gonna put some potatoes in there. I'm going to, and really I'm just using these squash and potatoes for fresh vegetables for the cooking process. Now I am gonna be adding in some kale before serving. And if you notice in most of my recipes, instant slow cooker recipes, I have things kind of set out. One thing is you do the night before, and that's just to help you. That is it. There's no magic thing about cutting something up and putting it in the fridge. It's just back in the old days, and I'm going to move these knives, because it just seems like a safer thing to do. And you guys can tell I'm still wearing shorts today. <laughs> um, it's because you could have it ready the night before just to throw in, and you could still do this. A lot of times before the pandemic, everybody was trying to get stuff together and run off to work. Now a lot more people are working from home. You may not be one of those people. And if not, doing that whole night before, and you can see that both in both of these cookbooks. So this is the revised edition of the Vegan Slow Cooker. And if you want a signed copy of this, you can buy a copy through virtualvegfest.com. Helps my local VegFest. And I can make a little more money off of it too. And you get it signed. So hopefully it's win-win for everyone. I don't have this book in, but Vegan Slow Cooking for Two is also great. It uses a little one and a half to two quart slow cooker, which is kind of awesome in my opinion. Do you guys have any questions about delicata squash or anything like that? And so basically we're going to be putting in, okay, get this and see where we're going. Okay, so I'm going to start off, and I know I want at least four cups of water in there. I think I'm going to want more than four cups of water. I am going to go ahead and put, I'd say this is about two cups of delicata, two cups of potatoes. So I'm going to want more water. And actually, this is a slow cooker that does four quarts, six quarts, or eight quarts. So we're going to let it see what it wants to be. Okay, now let me get a spatula. 
I'm gonna add in four veggie bouillon cubes. If you're using veggie bouillon cubes with salt, A, I would not put them in at this moment. These are salt free. These are my homemade veggie bouillon cubes. You can see that they were frozen. They're still pretty frozen. They've been out for a little bit. Um, and you can get that recipe on plantbasedinstantpot.com or healthyslowcooking.com. In the Instant Pot, Plant-Based Instant Pot, it's how to do it in the Instant Pot. And in the other one, it's how to do it on the stove, in the oven, or in your slow cooker. I'm going to put, I was going to put a whole cup. I'm going to put a whole cup. <laughs> and then let's put in about three more cups of water. Okay, and so this line right here is the, and let's see if you can see it better here. This line right here lets me know it's the six quart. So this would be something you'd make in a six quart or you'll lower the amounts, okay? So, and I'll move this where you can kind of see it. I don't have it plugged in right now. I'm gonna plug it in after, just so I can move it around like that. So there's a few things I wanna do. I know I want to put some marjoram in there. I'm going to put a little paprika. I'm going to use garlic powder and onion powder. If we were doing this in the Instant Pot, which you could do, so since we're cooking beans, we don't want salt to go in with the beans. It can slow down the cooking time. And if your beans are old, it can really bite you in the behind. So only put bouillon in there right now or broth if it's salt free. If it's not, then I would even just put it in right before or maybe half an hour before serving and let it get kind of into the mix. But it's, it's so easy to make this bouillon. It's really an onion, some carrots, some thyme, and some celery. And you can cook it in your Instant Pot with no water or in your, uh, I mean, in your slow cooker with no water, your Instant Pot with about a half a cup of water, and then freeze it in cubes. So it's ridiculously cheap. Um, you do puree it with nutritional yeast. And you could add salt to it later on if you want. But I really recommend waiting and salting your food near the end whenever possible. Um, and Ashley says, I need to get one of your slow cooker books. We just have the air fryer book at the moment. Oh, it might make the samosa chat soon. I know I'm trying to figure out a gluten-free samosa wrapper so I can have samosas again because my life will be complete. Samosa chat to me is like chicken soup, to, is to some people. And Susan Smith says, recipes online for slow cooking. You could go to healthyslowcooking.com and at the top, I have slow cooker recipes, instant pot recipes, air fryer recipes, but there's tons of slow cooker recipes there. So that's where I would go. And Barbara said, well, I'd be posting a recipe. Um, I had right shoulder surgery and I'm not a lefty. Yes, I'm, if things go as planned, I'm gonna put this on the blog. This is a brand new recipe. So I'm, I'm going to come back and actually listen to this and write down the amounts. And then I'm going to, after tonight, I'm going to correct some things. Like maybe I decided, you know, your instinct was right. That's too many lentils, right? So I'll, I'll figure out those things later on after it cooks. So you're seeing the process as it happens. So the reason onion powder and garlic powder. So there's two things. Those of you who watch me all the time have heard this spiel. It's not artificial. It's not a chemical. It is onion or garlic that's been dehydrated and ground into a powder. So there's nothing wrong with having it. And there's nothing wrong with using it anytime. Sometimes if I'm feeling lazy or I'm cooking something on the stove, maybe I don't have time to crush a, some garlic. Maybe I don't have garlic. So it's always good to have in your slow cooker I really would like you not to put raw onions in. If it doesn't bother you and you like it just fine, do. I saute my onions before I put them in the slow cooker. And that makes some people very, very angry. I found out during some of my cookbook reviews. But you just use onion powder instead, right? If you just want it to be a throw together thing, that's what to do. So I am going to put in about, a half a teaspoon 
of onion powder. Okay. And I'm probably going to put in a teaspoon of garlic powder because I usually, for me, I like the ratio about there. And this is um, more granulated garlic. Let me let you see the top view. So you can kind of see, you're going to see everything kind of just floating there. Okay. But I think sometimes the granulated gives it a little bit nicer flavor. And Ashley says garlic powder goes in pretty much everything, so no, no judgment. I know, there should be no judgment. This is delicious food, people. I'm going to put in two taste, tea, two something or others, two teaspoons of marjoram, because if you know me, you know I love me some marjoram, right? And if you don't have marjoram, you could use something... Um, you could use a little bit of oregano. I would use less. Marjoram, and if you have marjoram and oregano, smell them together. And you can smell the difference. And this has a little bit more of a floral, open, lighter smell. Maybe even slightly lemony. Now, I was at the Wegmans, which blew my mind. We have, now have a Wegmans in like Morrisville, Cary. And so I got some fresh herbs when I was there. I got hemp tempeh, I mean hemp tofu, no, I have not had anything to eat or drink yet today except for water, so forgive, um, pumpkin seed tofu is what I found and it's blown my mind, but anyhow, I'm going to put, let's put maybe, and somewhat times in my other book people say, what's a sprig? This is a sprig, like one little thing. Sometimes sprigs are this long though, right? So that's why I might say X amount. This could be kind of, this is kind of like a bouquet of sprigs. So I could just put that in there if I wanted four. So I'm gonna do six sprigs of thyme, which would probably be about a teaspoon of thyme. Since this is going to slow cook, I'm also going to readjust some of these seasonings. So you'll see that later this evening. And I'm going to put, um, let's put a few smaller sprigs. Let's just do two rosemary. Because to me, rosemary smells like fall. It's just amazing. Um, and Barbara says she's got some delicata in her Misfits. Guess where I got mine? Misfit Market. And who knows, maybe I'll even do an unboxing today. I haven't done unboxings in a while, mostly because the post office has destroyed the boxes so much. As soon as we get them, I try to get everything out. Like, almost a whole side fell off of it, and I lost no produce, which seems miraculous. So I'm going to cook this on high probably for two hours and then put it to low. I'm gonna check, the, I'm gonna put it on high for two hours. I'm gonna check and see if the lentils are getting soft at all. If not, I may even leave it on high just because I know these are older. Oh, and I forgot to put paprika in. Let's put a teaspoon of paprika in there too. And I need to get more paprika, regular and smoked. I'm going to have to get on that for sure. Um, and when we're open this up tonight, I'm going to taste it. And I'm, I may be like, I taste no thyme, so I'm going to add some thyme. Or that rosemary isn't strong anymore because it is going to fade. Usually with instant pots and slow cookers, you have to put in more seasoning to get that taste in the end. Or you just season again before serving. And I find that be, to be really good. I suspect I'm going to put some balsamic in here, and I'm going to put some kale in. There is a tiny, tiny possibility that I might make like a kale pumpkin seed pesto to swirl in there, because that that's the idea that burst into my head near the beginning. So that's what this is going to be. Do you guys have any questions about this? Now this. Insta or this slow cooker doesn't exist. You can't buy it nor like normal anymore. This was fine when I was writing the revised vegan slow cooker 
and it's one of the ones you click if it's four, six, or eight quarts that you're cooking. So it lets you have one Instant Pot to use for all the different things. The other one I used to use was the Hamilton Beach one that had the three things nested in them, and I still have that too. And you can find it, but it's like ridiculously priced. So once again, we're kind of defaulting back to having a four quart and a six quart or eight quart. If you have an eight quart slow cooker and you are trying to cook things out of here, I think in the new one, I tried to talk a little bit more about some of the different sizes, but in general, unless it says my recipes are written for four quart slow cookers, this one would be for a six quart slow cooker. And what the difference is, is that an eight quart slow cooker is gonna cook it way faster if it's for four or six. So just know that you might have to make some adjustments depending on what, if you have a 16 quart slow cooker, this is gonna cook really fast because the temperature is made to heat up that much water, right, or that much liquid. So if you have a little bit of liquid in, it's gonna heat up all the faster. Ooh, and I haven't opened mine yet. And Joanne said, um, the smoked paprika came in the bean club box. I'm so glad for that. I haven't opened it because I was going to do an unboxing. Perhaps an unboxing will happen later this week, too. Um, and Barbara loves all those spices. And um, she said that her box was all tore up, too, and afraid it would be ruined, but the inside was fine. We're having a lot of trouble with the FedEx, one FedEx place. And actually Cheryl has ordered something, like she has ordered a trailer for a kayak that comes in four pieces and three pieces have come through and she's put those together and she's waiting on the rest. And so the second shipment's been damaged and sent back. So I don't know about where you guys are, where we are, like the mail is a little, it's, and it's not the postal mail, it's the FedEx people in specific that are messing up our stuff. Hi, Sophie. How are you doing? I haven't seen you in a while. I hope you are doing amazing. Um, do you guys have any other questions for me? Because if not, I'm going to go have my decaf coffee and a little bit of lunch so that I can have brain cells again. And I'll give you a minute. And I'm going to try and come on and do a few more lives. Um, since I am doing so many cooking classes, I, I really want to make sure everybody gets the word out. Again, I'm going to put all that information up here so that you guys can join in. And don't forget the Instant Pot class is this Saturday. And so at one o'clock, and this is through Kathy's Club. So those classes through Kathy's Club, you can either join for $50 a month and you get both classes every month automatically enrolled. And you can cancel whenever you want through your account on your own. You don't even have to email me. You can cancel it, no hard feelings. Um, or you can get, I've been doing the bundle again because of the pandemic, and so you can get both classes for $60. Um, the classes individually are $35 each. The classes on Chibo are $30 each. And Joanne says FedEx, she's been having a lot of trouble with FedEx as well. And so he said time zone. Well, you know, I haven't been on live in a little while. I've just been working my patootie off, which means behind. Um, okay, you guys. Well, I will be back later tonight to at least show you what happened. Good or bad, you get to know. Okay, see you then.